Hi everybody, this is Alchemist 2 and I'm back again with another series review. I just recently watched American Gods and the episode was called Head Full of Snow. And in this particular episode, the the maiden is the one who awakens and she's one of the Zarnayev sisters and she gives um, Shadow the moon to protect him. And what I really enjoyed about this particular episode is I forgot to mention the white buffalo from before because that's Native American legend and what the white buffalo symbolizes is that an era of peace is supposed to be arriving when the buffalo is present. And of course, it's a whole millennial reign kind of predisposition to that culture. Well, it seems like all cultures have kind of a, a figure like that that heralds in a new era of thought and all that um all that entails but really what i absolutely loved about this episode was there was a jinn involved and you got to see some persian mythology and arabian mythology and the jinn i really liked the jinn i thought that he was just mesmerizing and he reminded me of the African goddess from the beginning. He's very similar to her, actually. Um, the redhead, the one that actually had all the coins, he's going to be important later on, but he just has kind of a semi-cameo appearance near the end when he's riding with this guy that decides to take it upon himself to be a good Samaritan. I thought, uh, not a good idea. <laughs> But, uh, of course, Shadow goes against Chernabog again, and he wins this battle with him in checkers. And Chernabog lets him go. Um, let's see, other significance in this episode. Oh, yeah, the very beginning. I was curious. It, it really reminded me a lot of Sandman. If you've read Sandman, then you'll notice that there are, are nods. And this was a deliberate nod to Sandman with death involved. And, of course, this series version of death is different from what we're used to seeing in, in Sandman and I I like both um kind of incarnations thereof and this death he comes to meet this a woman who's been practicing the old ways of Egypt and I thought oh thank god we're going into the book of the dead because I'm fascinated with it I don't know why but I, I mean I have been ever since I was little but he walks her through the desert and Actually, they, they go into the afterlife, the, the actually the journey before she is tested. And <laughs> it's incredible. Her, her heart is weighed in the balance. And, of course, she admits to some wrongdoings. And Death looks at her and he says, you, you did well. You did well enough. And I thought... <laughs> I thought that was so funny. I thought, eh, <laughs> you did well enough. Uh, I'll let you go. Go, go. But uh, <laughs> that cracked me up for some odd reason. I guess it's because it's so laconic, the way that he said it. And she gets a chance to have four doors, and there's an Egyptian Rex with her, a Sphinx. And I thought, oh, that's very um, mysterious and, and intriguing. And everybody knows what the Sphinx resembles, and... It makes sense that she would have our a hairless Rex, as they're called. And they're ugly, though. Know, they're like, ugh. I mean, if any animal lover... I don't mean to be mean, but they're just nasty looking. But anyway, she has an Egyptian Rex, and it's the one that chooses her destination when she reincarnates. And I thought, hmm, she's going to come back later. And I like her character already, and I'm wondering what she's going to do or what she'll become and later on in the episode, of course, uh, Mr. Wednesday, or Odin, he he uh, asks Shadow to think snow, just ponder about it. And then there's this really whacked out scene that makes you think you're tripping LSD when the car just kind of rolls across these uh, big marshmallows. <laughs> but I love that the, I, that scene was just unbelievable. I thought, wow. And, of course, there were some other scenes in uh, this particular... This episode is my favorite of, of the whole series so far just because it was so tantalizingly breathtaking and you were scintillated and it was 
just bedazzling throughout. You just could not pry your eyes away from the screen. It was that good. And of course, Neil Gaiman has a way of just weaving this yarn that entangles you. And you you don't care that you're entangled. You just love every second of it, even though there are moments where it is kind of uh, controversial and uh, uncomfortable to watch in certain instances. Uh, <laughs> I Like I said, the, the scene with the gin and the cab driver, oh, I just, I loved every second of that. I, I like to see... Uh, interpretations of love in that in that way even though that was a methodology for the jinn to <laughs> to borrow his corporeal frame and I thought oh you no oh, good <laughs> you sneaky Pete but I thought I still like you because you are daggone handsome but anyway uh, it was uh, an astounding episode and I look forward to more in the future and I can't wait to see where it's headed because uh, our, our redhead's back, of course, as I said before, and he is none too happy. <laughs> He's looking for Shadow, of course, and he has a beef against Mr. Wednesday and I'm thinking it's because Wednesday hired him to be his bodyguard and he's no longer needed. So he takes it very, 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 very personally. And he has a vendetta. He said, Shadow, I don't know what you have protecting you this time. He had the sun protecting him at one point. And of course, uh, the Zarnayev maiden gives him the moon to, to shield him. I thought, oh, cool. And it came in the form. She just, she said, reach out, grab it. And he... Uh, extends his hand and he, he just plucks it. I mean, literally plucks it from the sky and it takes the form of the silver dollar. And I thought, that is so cool. And I mean, the, the, the symbolism, the allegory, the uh, metaphor, every little mechanism of plot that segues just so seamlessly one into another. It's, it's poetry in motion. I love watching this and... Neil is the writer I aspire to become because he just has this beauty in how he speaks. His vocabulary is impeccable. And he also, one thing that I really enjoyed about this episode was he said something about Americans in and of themselves that was rather striking and actually very true. A lot of us we are kind of a country, we're a melting pot, but we sort of lost our identity along the way somehow. I don't know when or where or how that happened, but uh, we don't know who we are. But we kind of think we have the semblance of we know somewhat what we're doing and where we're going, kind of. We're, I mean, Hitalia did a very uh, excellent portrayal of this by making... Um, <clears throat> Al or Albert, uh, a character who wore glasses because if you know anything about media and how short-sighted characters are portrayed, they need something to help them get a better perspective. And voila, the glasses. So any anytime you see a character with, with glasses, it means that they need help trying to they don't see the whole pic they don't see the whole picture they don't see the big picture and uh america didn't always have glasses which i thought was always interesting so i thought of that i thought hmm, yeah they're doing the same thing here only in a different way um uh, but there's just that question of identity brought to the forefront and as an american myself I'm still trying to figure out who the heck I am and wh what I'm supposed to do with my life. So there you go. Uh, I don't, I don't deny it, and I I don't uh, look at it as something bad, honestly. But uh, this episode was by far the best that I've seen so far of the whole series. Of course, I haven't seen any further episodes, but looking forward to more episodes down the pike. So, with that said, I will bid you all a fair adieu. And hope you have a tremendous weekend. It's getting warmer. 
uh, I'm actually going to get Memorial Day off. So when I do, I'm going to be able to go and uh, just squee my gearhead head off <laughs> and be happy because there's a, a car show on Memorial Day. And I haven't been to a car show in, in dog's age. And I wanted to go to Meekum, but I wasn't able to because...